name is Ted Wigga and I am the President and CEO of WY Enterprises. I am very happy to have you join us tonight for the series premiere of our first new fall show called Culinary Corner at WYE The Network. Yay! Our intention with this show is really to bring you closer to your kitchen or bring your kitchen closer to you. It's about taking culinary terms you may not be familiar with and making them easy to understand. And we intend to do that through easy to follow recipes with good fun food, as well as some very engaging and talented hosts that we'll be bringing you. Tonight, in the pilot episode, we have our, our very famous and one and only Chef John Stranges, who will be your guest host this evening. And he's whipping up a lobster ravioli. Now, don't let that scare you shouldn't be something that scares you because it really is a simple and very easy process as Chef John will show you. Let's join him. To start off, we're going to be making a lobster ravioli with a saffron mushroom cream sauce. And we're going to start preparing the dough right here, but before I do that, let me wash my hands because I want impeccable clean hands before I start working with that dough, so let me do that. Alright, we're ready. Let's move on to the table and let me start creating this dough. All right, so to start off our ravioli dough right here, I have four cups of uh, all-purpose flour, four eggs, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and some extra virgin olive oil, which I'm going to be using a tablespoon of this. So I move myself over here on the table this time instead of using the cutting board because to make this dough, I prefer a larger work area, and unfortunately, what I'm working with over there in the kitchen is kind of small. So to make this dough, I'm just going to use the table. So to start this off with, let's just move this to the side. And let's grab this flour. We're going to dump this flour on the table. And we're just going to create a well in the center. Just like that. Done with this, we're going to grab our eggs. And we're going to... Whoops. Just crack them in here. Finish with this, we're just gonna drop in here our salt and we're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil always. Alrighty, now what we want to do with a fork, we just want to start beating these eggs. Make sure not to breach this wall of flour that you have here, just do it gently and keep beating these and you're going to notice that this flour is going to start incorporating itself into these eggs and it's going to start creating your dough for you. So a little bit at a time. There we go. Once you start noticing your eggs, they're pulling in the flour just as you can see right here. Just with your hands, start incorporating some of that flour by pushing in the sides of this flour well, if you want to call it that. And keep beating. As you can notice right here, the more flour I'm adding into here, the more this dough is becoming thick and also reaching the consistency that we want for ravioli dough. So just slowly keep adding the flour. All right, you can always use your hands if you feel like doing so. Mix all this flour up real nice. At this point, you can just knead it with your hands. Just get all this flour incorporated real nice into this dough. Alright, 
as you can see here, we have a nice dough forming. Just keep kneading it. You want to knead this for at least 10 minutes just to get that gluten developed real nice into this dough. And then, once I've finished kneading this, we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so as you can see right here, I kept on kneading my dough for 10 minutes and picked up all the surrounding flour to incorporate it real nice into this dough until I got this ball result, as you can see right here. It's just enough so when you press on it, it springs back up. Now that's some well-made ravioli dough. So what am I going to do right now? I have a piece of plastic wrap here. I'm just going to wrap up this little ball of dough here. Let's squeeze them up. All right. We're going to set this in the fridge to rest for about an hour before we're ready to uh, prepare our ravioli here. So let me do that, then we'll get back to you. Alright, so our ravioli dough has been setting in the fridge for a sufficient time now. What we're going to do next, we're going to start preparing the filling that we're going to need to create these ravioli with. So, let's move over to the cutting board. Let me show you the ingredients. Okay, so over here we have two large garlic cloves that I just diced. Two tablespoons of diced shallot. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. A fourth of a cup of mascarpone cheese. A half a cup of dry white wine, two tablespoons of chopped flat leaf Italian parsley, and two eight ounce uh, lobster tails right here. Salt and pepper to taste. So to prepare this, we're going to start preparing our lobster tails. Alright, so to prepare our lobster meat, what we want to do, we want to grab these lobster tails and uh, with a pair of kitchen shears, just go underneath the shell and just open these lobster tails up. There we go, just like that. You just want to pull them apart and just pull out the meat in here. You want to just get your fingers underneath and pull all this meat out. There we go. Do the same with the other one. These two lobster tails, just these shells, you could use them later and reserve them for stock or you could throw them out. It's all up to you. What we want to do next is just grab this meat with your knife. We won't just want to chop this meat up. Okay, that's sufficient. So, let's move on to the stove. Let's start cooking this. Alright, so to prepare our filling right here, what we want to do is grab these two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to place them inside this pan that's been warming up on medium-high heat. We're just going to allow this butter to melt down and get all nice and hot. Okay, so my butter is nice and hot. What I want to do next, I'm just going to grab the shallot just place it in this pan together with my garlic and what I want to do I just want to give this shallot and this garlic just a few minutes just to sweat down once this garlic and the shallot becomes all nice and translucent then we can add our lobster meat okay so our garlic and our shallot is sweat down here nicely what we want to do next we just want to add this lobster meat in here I just want to saute this lobster meat just for a few minutes. We do not want to completely cook it because later we're going to add this into the filling for our ravioli. We do not want to overcook it. So we're just going to let this go two minutes in a saute and then later we're going to add the wine. And I am going to show you that in a second. However, let's keep on going with this for a moment. Okay, that looks good enough. It's just been like a minute, a minute and a half or so. This lobster is purposely being undercooked for the reason I told you earlier. What I want to do next, I just want to grab this uh, half of a cup of white wine, drop it in here. Alright, we want to let this white wine reduce by half. Okay, so this white wine is reduced by half. That is sufficient. What I want to do next, I'm just going to turn the heat off on this. And I'm just going to grab this lobster meat and place it in a plate or a bowl or any other container that you have available. We're just going to set this aside and let all this lobster meat cool down nicely. Okay. 
So I placed all this lobster meat in the bowl. We're going to let this cool down completely to room temperature. Then we're going to come back. We're going to show you the next step. So now we're going to start preparing our lobster ravioli filling and I have this lobster meat that cooled down completely at room temperature. What you want to do, you want to chop this down real fine. Now you can do this with a knife or if you have a food processor like in this case like what I have, let's just use this and we're going to dump this meat into this food processor and just uh, run it so we get a nice fine mince on it. So let me do that. good that looks like the consistency that you want right there just finely chopped lobster meat so what we want to do next let's just grab the same bowl that we had this meat in and we're just gonna pour all this chopped meat into this bowl okay so now we're going to start preparing our filling here. What we want to do, we just want to grab this uh, mascarpone cheese, this one fourth of a cup of mascarpone. Just place it in this bowl together with the lobster meat. Then we're going to add this uh, parsley, just two tablespoons of flat Italian parsley right here. And then just mix everything up. Get this mascarpone and this lobster meat nice and incorporate it together. While you're doing this, you might want to season it a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. There we go. Okay, so let's keep folding this in, incorporate everything real nice, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're going to start preparing our ravioli right now, and to do that, I have this pasta machine, and uh, yeah, this is a pasta machine that brings back memories because it's been in our family for more than 20 years almost. It's still one of those crank ones. I know that nowadays they have more modern equipment, especially the electronic pasta machines, if you want to call it that. They run on an electrical motor that you can buy, but hey, this one just has a sentimental value to me, so I'm using this one. Okay, so we got our uh, ravioli dough that we created earlier. Let's just unpackage it from the uh, plastic wrap. Okay, what we want to do, we just want to cut this dough into more manageable sizes. So I'm just going to quarter this. Alrighty. I'm going to just grab one of these pieces of dough. Just flatten it out a little bit so it makes it easier for it to fit inside the pasta machine. You could do this with a rolling pin if you feel like doing so. The pasta machine just makes it a lot more simpler. So we want to grab our pasta machine and set it to the lowest setting, not the highest. The lowest actually gives you the largest, um, how do you say, uh, press if you want to put it. Uh, the highest setting will give you a more thinner press. Alright, so I have this pasta machine set at the lowest setting, zero if you want to put it. I'm just going to run it through here. Okay, so I run it one time through the pasta machine. I just want to fold it over and then run it one more time. 
reason why the table keeps moving. Unfortunately, I'm working with pretty limited equipment here. There we go. All right, now what we want to do, we just want to up the setting a little bit and make these uh, rollers slightly more closer to each other. That way it gives us a finer pasta dough when you run them through and when you run the dough through it. So, there we go, that's fine. Just keep on putting the setting higher. Remember, higher means a pasta dough that is thinner. Lower means a pasta dough that is thicker. And uh, yeah, like I said, I apologize for the, uh, for the um, working thingy that I have here. This is 20 years old and yeah. However, as you can see, everything is coming out nicely. Hey, that's the good part about making uh, pasta in the house, especially with a machine such as this. It's just the whole part of the family and the holiday. It brings on to the experience, if you know. And we're okay. So it looks like I managed to muddle through it with my mom's old pasta machine here. But hey, the thing works perfect. It's just that when you're dealing with a table such as this one, and uh, yeah, um, as you can see what I was doing here. But hey. Look at this beautifully made ravioli dough right here. If you have any laying around from afterwards after you cut it, because what you want to do is after you make it nice and fine like this, just square it off and make yourself some nice sheets, almost all the same size. We're going to show you right now how to make your ravioli with these sheets. But if you have any leftovers, like I was saying, just either grab them and make them in another recipe. You could grab these or shred them apart, make another pasta dish with them, or just ball them up and put them in the fridge or in the freezer. You just keep them for another day. So now we're going to start preparing our ravioli. Let's just grab one of these sheets right here. Excuse me. There we go. Okay. So lay it down on your table. And then what we want to do, I have here just some egg wash. Just the one egg that I've beaten. And here we have that lobster ravioli filling that we made just earlier. What we want to do, just want to grab a teaspoon of this filling and just place it on top of this dough. Then another teaspoon. I want to just separate this two inches apart. Just to give you some uh, room here to work with. And keep on doing this until you filled up a whole sheet with filling. Okay, that's good for that sheet. Now what we want to do is grab some of this egg wash. And just brush the dough around the filling. Just like this. This is going to allow the dough to stick nice. It's going to act like a gluey, like a gluent agent or a glue, if you want to put it, excuse me. Uh, here we go. All right, done with that. Let's grab another sheet of ravioli dough here and just layer it on top of this filling. There we go. What I want to do now is press down, press down to form your ravioli. Press down on both sides. Make sure not to press too hard and make that filling just escape from your dough here. Alrighty. That looks good. Next thing with a ravioli cutter, you just want to go around. You just cut out your ravioli. have our ravioli right here perfectly made we're just gonna do the rest with the other ones then we'll move on to the next step all right so now that we finished cutting up our ravioli and preparing them we're going to finish this dish off by cooking them and preparing a sauce so let me show you the ingredients for this sauce that we're gonna need right here all right so to prepare our saffron mushroom cream sauce here 
I'm going to show you the ingredients. What I have here, I have one cup of chopped oyster mushrooms. Now, this all depends on your taste. You may decide to use any type of mushroom of your choice. I find these oyster mushrooms, they just have a nice meaty texture and a nice sweet flavor that just pairs perfectly with lobster. So, in this case, I'm using oyster mushroom. But like I said, it's all up to your choice. I have one tablespoon of diced shallot. Or you ever have a little bag of powdered saffron? Well, this powdered saffron, my mom sent it to me from Italy, so I don't know whether or not you'll be able to find this type of saffron in powder form as I have right here. If not, you'll be able to find anywhere, especially if there's some stores around here that sell saffron strands. Use one teaspoon of saffron strands. I have right here a half a cup of dry white wine, one tablespoon of unsalted butter, one cup of heavy cream and salt and pepper to taste. So, let's start cooking this. Okay, so right here I have a pot of boiling water on the stove. What I want to do, I'm going to start cooking my ravioli right here. So, I have these ravioli that I prepared earlier. What I want to do first, I just want to salt this water and salt to taste. According to Italian cooking, the best way to make some good homemade pasta is to get this, uh, that pasta water right there almost as salty as seawater. So, I'm going to do that, but salt is all up to your taste. It's going to drizzle in there some olive oil. The olive oil is going to act like a lubricant to avoid these uh, ravioli sticking together while they're cooking. Done with that. Let's just grab our ravioli and start placing them in this boiling water here. All right. So we're going to let these ravioli cook for 10 minutes. These ravioli, also another little pointer that I wanted to give you, if you feel like creating them the day before you have guests arrive at your home to eat dinner, you can do so. Just put them in the freezer, freeze them, come cook them up the next day. Just if you plan on doing that, instead of cooking them for 10 minutes like you would do with fresh ravioli, cook them for 15. So now that we place this in the pot, I have this other pan warming up on medium high heat. Let's create our sauce while this is cooking. Alright, so, like I said, I have this pan warming up on medium high heat. What I want to do, I want to just grab this uh, one tablespoon of butter, just drop it in this pan, let it melt down. Alright, the butter's almost melted, it's nice and hot. What I want to do next, is grab this shallot, place it in here and sweat this shallot down. Just give it a minute. Okay, the shell is sweated down nicely. What I want to do next, I'm just going to grab these oyster mushrooms, place them inside this pan, and do the same. Sweat these mushrooms down, evaporate the water content from them. Okay, these chopped mushrooms are sweating down nicely. I'm just going to give it an extra five seconds or so, and they're going to go be ready. And that looks about sufficient. Now what we want to do, we just want to grab this uh, dry white wine, drop it in here. Okay, we're going to let this reduce by half, then we're going to add our heavy cream. Okay, my wine is reduced. What I want to do next is grab this one cup of heavy cream, pour it in here together with now one teaspoon of saffron strands or powdered saffron as I have here. Okay, we mix everything real nice. Okay, I'm just season with some salt and pepper. Just give you this a taste test, see where we're going at. That's delicious. Okay, what we want to do now, we're just going to drop the heat. We're just going to let this go simmering very slowly while these ravioli are finishing cooking. When this is reduced, we're going to serve this sauce with our ravioli. So, let me finish this up, then we'll show you the finished product. 
Okay, so we finished our lobster ravioli with uh, saffron mushroom cream sauce, and here we go. Try this recipe out sometime, but don't worry, there's more coming soon. Wow, did I not tell you that was simple and easy? I mean, Chef John makes it, it makes everything, everything he makes, he makes it seem so simple because it is. It really, really is. So I really want you to try this recipe. I know I'm going to be making it this, this weekend for uh, friends and family. Um, please let us know how you like it and if you have some suggestions, if you'd like to see some recipes. Um, and if you would like to be one of our guest hosts in the future, please feel free to email us at wyethenetwork at wyenterprises.com. And if we did this correctly, it should be showing up down there right about now. So thank you for joining us. It's really been a pleasure um, and, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to spend with us this evening. We'll see you next Thursday, um, same time. Same channel, WYE The Network. Uh, we'll see you there. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.